Hey everybody, uh, sorry about my voice, I've got a bit of the cold. Um, anyway, so Handbrake. When you open Handbrake, uh, it'll pop up, and it should, oh, um, guess I had a project going before, sorry. Uh, anyway, it'll present you with this open dialog, and um, here it shows the sources, but you can see there on the side, it's got the Sherlock Holmes DVD, which I've got inserted right now. Um, this is a brand new DVD, so it shouldn't have any trouble. Sometimes certain discs will have uh, protection on them. You may need to use, uh, you need to install VLC sometimes to get past that and uh, also some DVDs you may actually need to use a program like Mac the Ripper or Rip It to rip a local copy that you can then import from. When you choose the the file it goes through and scans the titles. Um, this one again is going pretty quick sometimes if the disk is scratched it'll take a lot longer. It goes through and tries to find the uh, title that it, it assumes is the um, primary content on the disk. Uh, in this case, if we look, you, you'll see the, the second longest uh, title is 14 minutes. So really, the, the title one is our main content on the disk. Over here in the presets, we have a bunch of different uh, presets for different devices. Um, it comes built in with several Apple ones. Um, I've also built one for my wife's phone. Uh, when we want to put movies on her phone. Um, I like the Apple TV one because I primarily use it on Apple TV Take 2. You can go in and also and change the title here. I like to um, have everything uh, kind of the way that I want the movie title to appear, so not all caps and all that. You can change where it's stored also. You can also change whether you want it in an MKV file or an MP4 file. Uh, again, I prefer MP4 MP4. Um, because that's what the Apple TV likes to take. I usually don't change any of the video settings, but you can change the target size or the average bitrate to accommodate a uh, device with less storage. It'll create a smaller file if you drop the target size down, etc. Um, <clears throat> if we go over into audio here, uh, some DVDs have extra tracks, extra languages, director commentary, that sort of thing. You can add those in here, um, make those available for when you actually watch the film. Um, in the subtitles, similarly, uh, there are subtitle tracks that you can access. I usually don't use them when they're bitmap. They don't tend to work as well. Um, if they're the plain text closed caption track, then that works just fine, and you can choose that. Um, if you do choose that, and it's usually at the bottom too, if you do cho choose that, make sure that you check forced only. It, that way it won't come up all the time. It'll only come up when you specify on the device that you want to view the closed caption. Um, that way you're not stuck with it uh, on closed captions and not able to turn it off. The advanced settings, I you know, honestly I never really change anything in here. The defaults are, are pretty decent um, and so I, I don't fiddle with them at all. Um, I do however make sure that the chapters are all there. I like having the chapters available because you can skip through it just like you would on a DVD when you're watching it on your your TV or whatever that way you know you can skip through the first half of the movie that you don't really want to rewatch again um, the picture settings you can change the width and aspect ratio uh, also it has the decom and deinterlace there um, some movies if it's an action one you may want to flip it over to more towards the deinterlace so you don't have kind of that interlaced look because DVDs are 480p you can also click on the preview and view what it really is going to end up looking like. Um, and then you can choose start or handbrake has a really neat cue feature which you can see right here and uh, what you can do is you can set it all up and then choose add cue and then set up another title so some some things like um, TV series on DVD will have several episodes per DVD each episode is its own title so you can add the individual titles to the cue and they would show up just like this with multiple ones. And then once uh, you have those all done, if you wanted to do a multi-title DVD, um, then you can just click Start or uh, Command S, and um, I think it's Control S on Windows, and it'll just start uh, ripping, or not ripping, but creating a, a MP4 file um, from the DVD. Uh, it usually takes, um, depending on the, the processor, uh, about one to one, sometimes one to one and a half um, times the uh, length it would take to actually just watch the DVD straight through. Um, so
So if it's a longer movie, it's going to take a while to, to rip. All right, so uh, I've let it run here. It's almost done. Um, when, uh, when it's done, it'll just finish, and I actually have it set to launch MetaX, which is an app that lets me edit the metadata on the file. Um, but we can cover that another time. Um, and it will uh, just have a finished file. Um, where you've specified that you want the video file to be. And um, so it should launch it in just a second here. Or not launch it, but finish. Um, yeah, there's Meta X. So we can, we can close that out. And then we can go in to my movies folder. And here's the video. Just double check, make sure that that's kind of what I was looking for. Yeah. All right. You can see it's a little bit choppy. I probably should have slipped it a little bit more towards D interlace than the D comb in the video settings. But overall, it's actually still pretty good quality. And you know, if I had done more D interlacing, then it, it would be even better.